Electron Microscope An electron microscope is a microscope that uses a beam of accelerated electrons as a source of illumination. As the wavelength of an electron can be up to 100,000 times shorter than that of visible light photons, electron microscopes have a higher resolving power than light microscopes and can reveal the structure of smaller objects. A scanning transmission electron microscope has achieved better than 50 pm resolution in annular dark field imaging mode and magnification soft up to about 10,000,000x whereas most light microscopes are limited by diffraction to about 200 nanometers resolution and useful magnifications below 2000x. Electron microscopes have electron optical lens systems that are analogous to the glass lenses of an optical light microscope. Electron microscopes are used to investigate the ultrastructure of a wide range of biological and inorganic specimens including microorganisms, cells, large molecules, biopsy samples, metals, and crystals. Industrially, electron microscopes are often used for quality control and failure analysis. Modern electron microscopes produce electron micrographs using specialized digital cameras and frame grabbers to capture the images. In 1926 Hans Busch developed the electromagnetic lens. According to Dennis Gabor, the physicist Leo Szilard tried in 1928 to convince him to build an electron microscope, for which he had filed a patent out the first prototype electron microscope, capable of 400 power magnification, was developed in 1931 by the physicist Ernst Ruska and the electrical engineer Max Knoll. The apparatus was the first practical demonstration of the principles of electron microscopy. In May of the same year, Reinhold Rudenberg, the scientific director of Siemens Schuckertmorka, obtained a patent for an electron microscope. In 1932, Ernst Lubke of Siemens and Halsk built and obtained images from a prototype electron microscope, applying the concepts described in Rudenberg's patent. In the following year, 1933, Ruska built the first electron microscope that exceeded the resolution attainable with an optical, light, microscope. Four years later, in 1937, Siemens financed the work of Ernst Ruska and Bodo von Boris, and employed Helmut Ruska, Ernst's brother, to develop applications for the microscope, especially with biological specimens. Also in 1937, Manfred von Arden pioneered the scanning electron microscope. Siemens produced the first commercial electron microscope in 1938. The first North American electron microscope was constructed in 1938, at the University of Toronto by Eli Franklin Burton and students Cecil Hall, James Hillier, and Albert Priebus. Siemens produced a transmission electron microscope TEM in 1939. Although current transmission electron microscopes are capable of 2 million power magnification, as scientific instruments, they remain based upon Ruska's prototype. The original form of the electron microscope, the transmission electron microscope, TEM, uses a high-voltage electron beam to illuminate the specimen and create an image. The electron beam is produced by an electron gun, commonly fitted with a tungsten filament cathode as the electron source. The electron beam is accelerated by an anode typically at plus 100 kilo electron volts, 40 to 400 kilo electron volts, with respect to the cathode, focused by electrostatic and electromagnetic lenses and transmitted through the specimen that is in part transparent to electrons and in part scatters them out of the beam. When it emerges from the specimen, the electron beam carries information about the structure of the specimen that is magnified by the objective lens system of the microscope. The spatial variation in this information, the image, may be viewed by projecting the magnified electron image onto a fluorescent viewing screen coated with a phosphor or scintillator material such as zinc sulfide. Alternatively, the image can be photographically recorded by exposing a photographic film or plate directly to the electron beam, or a high-resolution phosphor may be coupled by means of a lens optical system or a fiber optic light guide to the sensor of a digital camera. The image detected by the digital camera may be displayed on a monitor or computer. The resolution of TEMS is limited primarily by spherical aberration, but a new generation of hardware correctors can reduce spherical aberration to increase ETH resolution and high-resolution transmission electron microscopy RITM, to below 0.5 angstrom, 50 picometers, enabling magnifications above 50 million times. The ability of RITM to determine the positions of atoms within materials is useful for nanotechnologies research and development. Transmission electron microscopes are often used in electron diffraction mode. 
The advantages of electron diffraction over X-ray crystallography are that test specimen need not be a single crystal or even a polycrystalline powder, and also that the Fourier transform reconstruction of the object's magnified structure occurs physically and thus avoids the need for solving the phase problem faced by the X-ray crystallographers after obtaining their X-ray diffraction patterns off a single crystal or polycrystalline powder. One major disadvantage of the transmission electron microscope is the need for extremely thin sections of the specimens, typically about 100 nanometers. Stop creating these thin sections for biological and materials specimens is technically very challenging. Semiconductor thin sections can be made using a focused and beam. Biological tissue specimens are chemically fixed, dehydrated and embedded in a polymer resin to stabilize them sufficiently to allow ultra-thin sectioning. Sections of biological specimens, organic polymers, and similar materials may require staining with heavy atom labels in order to achieve the required image contrast. One application of TEM is serial section electron microscopy, SEM. For example in analyzing the connectivity in volumetric samples of brain tissue by imaging many thin sections in sequence. The SEM produces images by probing the specimen with a focused electron beam that is scanned across a rectangular area of the specimen, raster scanning. When the electron beam interacts with the specimen, it loses energy by a variety of mechanisms. The lost energy is converted into alternative forms such as sheet, emission of low-energy secondary electrons and high-energy backscattered electrons, light emission, cathodoluminescence, or X-ray emission, all of which provide signals carrying information about the properties of the specimen surface, such as its topography and composition. The image displayed by NSEM maps the varying intensity of any of these signals into the image in a position corresponding to the position of the beam once specimen when a signal was generated. In the SEM image of an ant shown below and to the right, the image was constructed from signals produced by a secondary electron detector, the normal or conventional imaging mode in most SEMs. Generally, the image resolution of an SEM is lower than that of a TEM. However, because the SEM image is the surface of a sample rather than its interior, the electrons do not have to travel through the sample. This reduces the need for extensive sample preparation to thin the specimen to electron transparency. The SEM is able to image bulk samples that can fit on its stage and still be maneuvered, including a height less than the working distance being used, often 4 mm for high resolution images. The SEM also has a great depth of field, and so can produce images that are good representations of the three dimensional surface shape of the sample. Another advantage of SEMs comes with environmental scanning electron microscopes, ESEM that can produce images of good quality and resolution with hydrated samples or in low, rather than high, vacuum or underchamber gases. This facilitates imaging unfixed biological samples that are unstable in the high vacuum of conventional electron microscopes. In their most common configurations, electron microscopes produce images with a single brightness value per pixel, with the results usually rendered in grayscale. However, often these images are then colorized through the use of feature detection software or simply by hand editing using a graphics editor. This may be done to clarify structure or for aesthetic effect and generally does not add new information about the specimen. In some configurations information about several specimen properties is gathered per pixel, usually by the use of multiple detectors. In SEM, the attributes of topography and material contrast can be obtained by a pair of backscattered electron detectors and such attributes can be superimposed in a single color image by assigning a different primary color to each attribute. Similarly, a combination of backscattered and secondary electron signals can be assigned to different colors and superimposed on a single color micrograph displaying simultaneously the properties of the specimen. Some types of detectors used in SEM have analytical capabilities, and can provide several items of data at each pixel. Examples are the Energy Dispersive X-ray Spectroscopy EDS, detectors used in Elemental Analysis and Cathodoluminescence Microscope CL, systems that analyze the intensity and spectrum of electron-induced luminescence in, for example, geological specimens. In SEM systems using these detectors, it is common to color code the signals and superimpose them in a single color image, so that differences in the distribution of the various components of the specimen can be seen clearly and compared. Optionally, the standard secondary electron image can be merged with the one or more compositional channels, so that the specimen structure and composition can be compared. Such images can be made while maintaining the full integrity of the original signal, which is not modified in any way. In the reflection electron microscope, REM, as in the TEM, 
an electron beam is incident on a surface but instead of using the transmission, TEM, or secondary electrons, as EM, the reflected beam of elastically scattered electrons is detected. This technique is typically coupled with reflection high-energy electron diffraction read and reflection high-energy loss spectroscopy rules. Another variation is spin-polarized low-energy electron microscopy, SPLEAM, which is used for looking at the microstructure of magnetic domains. The stem rasters a focused incident probe across a specimen that, as with the TEM, has been thinned to facilitate detection of electrons scattered through the specimen. The higher resolution of the TEM is thus possible in STEM. The focusing action, and aberrations, occur before the electrons hit the specimen in thestem, but afterward in the TEM. The STEM's use of SEM like beam rastering simplifies annular dark field imaging, and other analytical techniques, but also means that image data is acquired in serial rather than in parallel fashion. Often TEM can be equipped with a scanning option and then it can function bot as TEM and STEM. Materials to be viewed under an electron microscope may require processing to produce a suitable sample. The technique required varies depending on the specimen and the analysis required. Electron microscopes are expensive to build and maintain, on the order of other complex machines such as airplanes. Microscopes designed to achieve high resolutions must be housed in stable buildings, sometimes underground, with special services such as magnetic field cancelling systems. Operating the electron microscope requires specialized training and continuing practice and education. The samples largely have to be viewed in vacuum, as the molecules that make up air would scatter the electrons. An exception is liquid phase electron microscopy is in either a closed liquid cell or an environmental chamber, for example, in the environmental scanning electron microscope, which allows hydrated samples to be viewed in a low pressure, up to, wet environment. Various techniques for in situ electron microscopy of gaseous samples have been developed as well. Scanning electron microscopes operating in conventional high vacuum mode usually image conductive specimens, therefore non-conductive materials require conductive coating, gold slash palladium alloy, carbon, osmium, etc. The low voltage mode of modern microscopes makes possible the observation of non-conductive specimens without coating. Non-conductive materials can be imaged also by a variable pressure, or environmental, scanning electron microscope. Small Stable specimens such as carbon nanotubes, diatom frustules and small mineral crystals, asbestos fibers, for example, require no special treatment before being examined in the electron microscope. Samples of hydrated materials, including almost all biological specimens have to be prepared in various ways to stabilize them, reduce their thickness, ultrathin sectioning, and increase their electron optical contrast, staining. These processes may result in artifacts but these can usually be identified by comparing the results obtained by using radically different specimen preparation methods. Since the 1980s, analysis of cryofixed, vitrified specimens has also become increasingly used by scientists, further confirming the validity of this technique. Biology and Life Sciences Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.